Uh, instead of having a co-stream today like what we usually do, uh, we decided to move our Narcosis PS4 launch, which was supposed to be tomorrow, today. So you're going to be able to experience with me uh, this first-person survival thriller game um, called Narcosis, where basically you are underwater trying to survive. You are in what's called a walking coffin. And so uh, with that, we'll get to learn more of what that walking coffin is, what this whole story is about. So hopefully you're psyched. Ooh. Look at that. Press E to start. Well, I mean, all right, I guess we can. I can press E. There we go. All right. All right. This is cool. Now, they throw you right into it, though. I love that. It's like, just press E. Simplicity. And then all of a sudden, boom. Here's your longitude, latitude, date, uh, the depth into which you're in, your temperature. Very nice. Uh, you got your oxygen, flares. Okay. So, do some with flares. Battery power. Event lock once in a lifetime. No. Okay. Ooh, look at these lovely people. Personnel. Hey now, what's going on? Ocean Nova. So this must be the company that the character works for. This is really cool. They like throw you right into it. <laughs> it's Facebook. You get the personnel files of like the people at this company called Ocean Nova. Like, all right. Look at this. Mr. Friendly Happy Pants here. His name is Virgil, I'm going to say. Faye, born 1980. He's a senior diver. Nationality, France. Let's look at Tyson. He looks Lyle. Lyle Ty He's happy. Look at that. He loves working here. He's an engineer. Nationality, USA. So it looks like we have, like, a company that has just a whole range of people from all over the world. There's no data though, that's a little bit interesting. So we got Hamza, 1981. He's a Derek Hand from Syria, status unknown. Try to take a selfie and put a filter on it. <laughs> I thought that said senior driver, then I should really get my eyes checked. Oh, there you go. He's American. Europeans are taught to not smile on business photos. Oh, that explains so much. Let's see here. One other person. Oh, he's happy. He's from Sweden. Look at that. Medical. All right. So we get a little bit of a sense of the company. This is cool. I appreciate it. So right now, it looks like we're in a pool for training. So we got to inspect. Now, again, WASP is for movement. And then the mouse is for the head. Hello? Hello? That's going to be hard to get used to. At least for me. Because usually it's either wasp or the mouse. But to have both is very... I mean, it makes sense. It absolutely does. It's just going to be interesting to get used to. So we could actually see into our suit a little bit. Look at that. Your oxygen. and thrust. Oh, okay. He sounded really excited. Oh, Jesus. Here, you know the drill. You're stressed. Panicking. Breathing hard. Oh, okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Sensors tripped. As you know, your O2 burns down a lot faster under stress. Anyway. Let's move. Whenever you're ready. Damn, this thing is heavy. You hear it, like, hit the ground? All good. Let's try it in reverse. Okay, target practice. Fire a couple of flares. Oh yeah, and this is for VR too. 
So if you really want a super engaging experience, even more so than what you're seeing now, it is for VR as well. And I think that is what's so cool about this game. Mr. Derp Gaming, thank you for the one kitty bitty. Appreciate it. How you been? Happy Sunday to you. We are doing Narcosis, first person horror survival game brought to you by Honor Code. All right. They are celebrating their launch onto PS4 tomorrow. And so we're playing it and getting into it right now on Steam, where you can get it currently as well if you're a PC gamer. Nav sis. Check. Thruster. Check. Oh. Back away, demon. Demon fish. Come here. I want to show you how to fillet. Shit got real, real. Can I go past this stuff? I don't know if I can. Oh, there we go. I think I'm gonna keep it in cinema mode, by the way, folks. This is very immersive. I don't want to ruin it. This is a good experience without having the cams on. Let's take a look around here, see what's going on. What can we interact with? What can't we interact with? Usually for survival games, that's what I'm constantly looking for. Alright, we got flares. We're at max flares. Oop. Nice. Gonna restore some of that oxygen. Ooh, look at that. Nice. Alright. Anything here? I think I should still explore around here some more, so let's see. Okay, so this is where we were, roughly. So it looks like it took away... It looks like pipes blew, took away a lot of the walkway here. I love, too, how it's so dark. Because this is where it would be. Like, if you're in super deep waters, it's gonna be dark. No light is gonna come down this far. Uh... Ah! What in the hell are you? Okay, you stay over there, spider crab. When it's all bearing down on so many levels, it's got to be managed. You can't shake the pressure. Just make your peace with it. Don't let it take the wheel. 
Is this the guy that did the voiceover for the Howard Johnson hotel commercials? We'll leave a light on for you. It sounds like that guy. Alright, so we got our knife, we got our flare. Thrust is good, oxygen is okay. We just got more oxygen, so that's good. Holy shit! Moving! Moving! Ah, uh, excuse me, I'm stuck. Shit. Woo, there we go. Okay, rocks can fall. Noted. Just gotta watch out for potential creatures, rocks, your oxygen, your own psyche. Looks like we got some more piping here that they ran. What does this say? Oh, methane? Uh, oh, okay. Yep, that's not good. Nope. Nope. And this is what causes global warming, kids. Oh, boy. Can I follow the pipe or should I go that way? I can't even see. We'll follow the pipe. I think it's a good idea. Uh, oh boy. Nope. Oh boy. Okay, we are in said pipe. All right, well, we are now uh, tunnel dwellers. Yeah. Okay. Really working on that claustrophobic factor. Your, your guy is stuck in a suit, but then also stuck in a pipe. And, uh, areas where it's just super tight and condensed. Alright, so we got more piping there. The earthquake, it looks like it shook the, um, walking system there. Ah, oh, good, more supplies. Give me your oxygen. What are you? Oh, okay. We still got flares. Oh, maybe flares... Hold on. Just want to see if it lights up the area better. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can use it to light up a space if you can't see. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we had to use it to, like, blind creatures or scare them away. But no, it, okay, so it is just for also sight. There's protocol for everything. Has to be. Second guessing puts lives at risk. So it's best to stick to procedure, step by step. So with an all hands call, you head straight for Compass One. Try and reach surface from comms. Oh, it looks like another flare or something. Oh yeah, another person. One person died because they got uh, caught on a pipe. Oh yeah, this person's dead too. The character's getting a little way poetic, which is kind of cool. Jesus. Ah. Whoo. <coughs> ah, God. Face 
Face hugger! Face hugger! <laughs> Holy crap! Poor girl, it was her birthday coming up. <laughs> JJ, Femi, is anybody getting this? Just anybody read. Femi, we're on the first half of the pride. Hands falling apart. Was not expecting the attack of the octopi. No one ever risen. Never. <laughs> no one ever expects the attack of the octopi. There was a big one over here, too, somewhere. Uh... <laughs> so much for a sealed environment. Rip. So there was two corridors we could have traveled down. I picked this one. We'll see what this one gets us. Because I really need some oxygen. And here's some right now. If I can get to it. Come on, it's right there. Yes. <coughs> Saved by the uh, busted door. Ah. Well, we started you off with full tank anyway. Of drills. You believe you know what to expect? Once I got inside where it's familiar and you should feel safe. Even though I had to, those first few steps weren't easy. It almost has like a alien sort of vibe to it in a way, you know? Ship gets busted. Nowhere to really run. No one could hear you scream. Yeah, thought they would restart you at the very beginning. Yeah, evidently when you die, you just start at the last checkpoint. Which is good. I'll take it. <laughs> ah! Jesus. Okay, so that body was not there before. And then you get the oxygen ch tank and it appears. Oh, you can walk around. You can walk around him. Okay, good. I thought they actually just barred me away from coming down here. Ooh, okay, crew headquarters. Shuttle bay. Education or evacuation pod. <laughs> Education pod. <laughs> I'ma learn you something. Get in this pod, boy. <laughs> Maybe you are the alien. Ever think of that one, huh? That is true. Under here, I am the alien. The fish are like, what the fuck, dude? Get out. This is our lab. We are doing very important experimentation. Please leave. No one asked for you here, sir. Okay, we're maxed out on flares. Yeah. Oh, hello. How did you get in here? I understand some of the fish. How the heck did Big Mama Crab Spider get in here? Nope, yep, water damage on the uh, computer there. Hope they have Apple Care. Get out of here. Be gone! Demon spawn crab. <sighs> Things are creepy. Yeah, 
you know, it's like spiders are everyone's worst nightmare. And they figured out a way of bringing it here. Oh, what the? Get out of here. Get. 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 Get out of here. Oh, cool. And then the canisters just get dropped behind. That's cool. The ones that get thrown out. Are, are there any survivors? Uh, evidently not. I'm gonna go with no. Oh. This isn't creepy at all. Alright guys, we're all going down. First floor. Ah, oh, Jesus. The door disappeared. Yep, this isn't creepy at all. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Oh. Hey, hey, open the blinds. Come on. Whew. Holy shit. Normally, the habs are lit up top to bottom, all the time. A lot of the gear was waterproof, some of the lights and monitors were still running. So it wasn't dark, but it's fading. Like the whole thing's on life support. Oh, we got a body to the right. Body to the right. Squid also on my right, you're gonna die. So was it the water that killed the guy, or the killer squid? That's the question. <coughs> oh, we can't get in there yet either. Yeah, look at the squid just staring him down like, yeah, what's up, bro? Do you even lift? You nasty bastard. Alright. So eventually, I think we could get in there. I think. Another tank. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Zebra octopi. I hate all octopi. Did I mention uh, that calamari is a fine dish? Huh? Huh? Did I mention that? Calamari is one of the best dishes out there. I think more people should eat calamari. I want to get in that exercise room. That'd be a way. Critical access server to override. Okay. Hey, can we not turn off the lights, please? That would be great. Can, can we not? Anyone want some lotion? She puts the lotion on the skin. Wait, phone? Hello? Tech support! Oh, even the hamster's dead. Damn it. That's why we can't have nice things. I don't like this. There's got to be something in here, right? Nothing? Really? It seems super strange that there's nothing in here.
Okay. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm back in the room. So there was a purpose to the room. Besides a floating hamster. Rip. Can we get some, um, some Fs in chat for the hamster, please? Oh, that's creepy. Look at the poster. You just found a phone. Now find out the truth. The thing is that we did just find a phone. That was, uh, yep. That's, uh, good job, guys. Good job at honor code for that moment. And once again, we are playing Narcosis, a first person horror thriller survival based game. You're underwater, trying to not lose your sanity and your life. Hey, Rasta, how's it going? Welcome to Chad. Thanks for playing. Never seen someone pick up uh, on the phone thing before. Kudos on that. <laughs> well, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, that was such a cool concept. Love that. Oh, not shipping for one more week on PS4. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Sorry about that. So, one more week until the PS4. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I love the details. The creep factor is real. The creep factor is real. Uh, hi. And we're back. Nice, reaching out for the hand and all of a sudden, boom, right back here. Yeah, there's so many different like moments of like symbolism and little little like Easter eggs. It's so cool. I really need to get an oxygen tank. That really needs to be a thing that happens. There we go, right there. It's like the game knew. Dang, this earthquake really effed things up. Ah, nice! So Rasta Gundam is the uh, founder and games writer amongst other things. The, the person who wears many, many hats. Well, welcome to chat. Appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us today. So folks, if you have any questions about the game... It's relentless. Feel free to bring them up. I mean, the isolation is... unnatural little problems start to spiral. Any baggage you don't check at the surface comes unpacked pretty quick. Some find ways to cope, others struggle. Okay. Uh... Hello? Yep. Totally lost my mind. Sorry to walk on you there, sir. Apologies. <coughs> Whoa. Let me get to the door. I might try and turn my head as if that's going to do anything. Okay, hold on, guys. So I feel like I have to step on this guy again. Hold on. Sorry, Frank. 
<laughs> Wait, are we sure this is under the ocean, not secret LSD research? Well... <laughs> okay, so can I use these desks? And those creepy spider crabs. Ah! Yep. Oh, and the oh, and the squids. Really? Oh, uh, or the octopus? I don't know what they are. Face huggers. I'm just gonna call them face huggers. We got mama crabs and face huggers in there. Oh man. Big mama crabs and face huggers. Yep. Yep. Yep, yep, and yep. Do I have to go in there? Like, is there a way to avoid that? Ah! Okay. So, Dal, uh, Anders, Dahl Rider, Supervisor, Denmark. Anders propped us up whenever we came together as a crew. Daily debriefs, major initiatives, birthday parties. The Japanese give them as gifts for good luck and inspiring perseverance. The eyes are intentionally left blank. The recipient fills one in upon setting a goal and the other upon completion. Oh, nice touch. I like that. That's cool. I can't tell whether this lopsided cyclops is winking or just deformed like Anders and his ambitions. Uh, that secret stays here. See, you also learn a little something different about cultures, you know, but it's also a very nice touch. You know, we've gotten this far into the game. Now, can we complete it? Oh, Jesus. Thanks for that. Yeah, what is that, huh? Why don't, why don't you go to it? You're getting a little too close to me. Huh? Why don't why don't you um uh... you keep going that way to the right? Come on. Oh, keep going. Move it, laws. Nova was groundbreaking, like you said. It could be years before we know all the consequences. We might never understand the ecological impact. It was very expensive, and 
19 people died. Like it or not, you're the human face of all this. So what do you say to your critics? I believe in what we were doing. But was it worth the cost? That is always the question, right? Was it worth And we actually don't know what they were doing, as far as I'm aware of. Besides having a bunch of flares and oxygen tanks, they were here with something, including a ton of methane gas, um, which is, again, going to have a massive uh, ecological impact. top of the human impact, that is. Oh, not another face hugger. You mother. Get away. Hey, it actually went away. It actually listened. Restore power to activate lift. I was afraid you were going to say that. <coughs> oh, you think they were mining the methane? Oh. Uh, how many are in the crew manifest? Let's see here. 2, 4, 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it said 19 people died. There are 20 people listed here. So he must be one of the photos, is my assumption. Oh, Jesus. Jeez. Here's a face. Oh, you face hugging mother. Round two. Hamza, like driving a forklift or swinging a golf club but after enough use, an ADS eventually becomes an extension of you. Second nature, a matter of habit. He wasn't part of the dive crew, but Salih still managed to log hundreds of hours out on hikes. Not for fun exactly, just so we, so we, just, eh, just so we'd know he had. There we go. I guess it's a little like being stabbed in the back, seeing and hearing your suit systems shut down around you one by one. Which is worse, a slow death from a wound you can't see or being betrayed by the suit which is what you thought you'd bonded with? Interesting. Okay, we're maxed out on flares. Anything around here? Ooh, hello tank. Yes, please. <laughs> so bets on which of those uh, photos people are you? Yeah, right? It's a good, uh, it's a good question, actually. So we don't want to go out that far. Need to get in there. There we go. Whew, okay. 
Nope. Anything? Oh, here we go. Give me your power. Oh, shit. An overlord? No. So I guess I have to figure out how not to overload it. 345 volts. 455 volts. 690 volts. Here's another puzzle for folks. You're an engineer. You're a problem solver. <clears throat> you value logic and precision. You talk a lot about times, distances, values, and yet there were some challenges you couldn't solve. Numbers are easy. It's people that are complex. Numbers bring things into focus. No gray areas to distract you from getting things into perspective. Oh, it's a chase now. Okay. And the closer these bodies get to him... Oh, shit. The more the methane starts to hit him. I don't know if it's like guilty conscience kind of stuff. Or what? Oh shit. Oh shit. This entire experience is defined Ooh. by the fact that you came back alone. Your story started with 20 people, but ends with one. So when it comes to telling those stories, you're the only one who can. Yeah. There's a responsibility to get things right, for the record. Yeah, I don't know if it's like guilty, like the guilt is getting to him and he's being haunted by those that have died in a way. Or something, and because the methane, I don't know, that's interesting. There was a space game where you were exploring another planet. This kind of reminds me of it. It was messed up, and that game led me to the movie Moon, which was uh, also messed up. Yeah, we got the guy's ID. Yeah, we, we read through it. He was from Sweden.
Huh, so there are different objects for each person that died, it looks like. But we've only found two thus far. Another country heard from... It's a Zimbabwean banknote. Devil's Advocate, Practical Jokers. Decent, genuine guys. Don't worry, JB. I'll try not to spend it all in one place. My favorite movie to date is called Triangle, and it's not, uh, and it's not the miniseries with the guy from Jurassic Park. Can you please follow the light? So it looks like the methane is breaking through. We're seeing different areas of it. I'm gonna get some uh, oxygen first, okay? So you you do your thing. <coughs> whoo! What a whew. What did you all think? I'm gonna get some music. I need some music after that. Give me some music. How? What did? Whew. So what did you all think of Narcosis by Honor Code Inc. And by the way, thank you Honor Code for following us today for being in chat. Um, and, and thank you again to the the founder as well as writer of the game among many other hats that I'm sure they have worn uh, Thank you for joining us today for hanging out again. The reason why we're doing this is because we saw it We we, we read it and we looked at it and went. Oh my god. Okay horror thriller Survival I like that. Let's let's check it out. Let's dive into it again going off of puns uh, unintentional but going off of puns and, you know, we had this opportunity, we found out, well, you know, they're looking to launch it on the PS4. And I was like, well, man, okay, well, let's, let's, let's celebrate it then. Let's, let's push it out there. Let's, let's get some feedback uh, from you all uh, in the audience there in the chat, hanging out with us today. And I have to say, I mean, based off of going through this game, it sucks you in. And like there are points where it's difficult, but it's supposed to be difficult and it, it makes you feel like oh I did it, you know, like this sense of accomplishment and Again, it wasn't open world or anything like that But that was fine because it was story driven and you're trying to figure out who you are as a character What happened here? What was going on here? Who are these people you're coming across? Um, you know get, get a sense of the world get a sense of these people in the life that was there um, and then that twist at the end uh, let alone the 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 impact of you know seeing your your friends and colleagues dead and not make it out um, the fear of being locked into this suit and then locked under the pressures of the ocean um, is just unbelievable and it was great because it gave them leeway to be really creative with the things that we saw and how we experienced the world around us, things larger than usual, smaller than usual, uh, things twisted and contorted, it's the, such as the rooms, uh, messing with our realities, because you are slowly losing your mind. You're by yourself in this suit. You don't know if you're going to make it out alive. Um, it's it's crazy. It, it really is crazy to think of being in a situation like that and having to go through something like that, for instance. You know, and, and, and to think about the richness of the audio, the richness of the details of the ocean and the different creatures and the different things around you that once this person thought of as normal and all of a sudden it's something completely different and it's something that he has to then explore. Uh, Tatiana says, I thought it was really well executed, especially for an indie game. It didn't strike me as survival game in the sense of survival games, crafting things, gathering resources, having multiple ways to do something. Uh, that is true. Again, mostly it was just flares and oxygen. Those were really the two things you had to worry about. I wouldn't have minded. Um, and again, this is based on, though, the the budget at hand, right? And, and like how much time they could spend in the game. Uh, but... You know, it would have been cool to be able to create certain things to help open up doors or to help get from one point to the other. 
but I do really greatly appreciate the puzzles and how it's like it didn't feel like a puzzle but it was a puzzle and you know it wasn't like blatantly obvious in a way which I really appreciated but I really liked it and I love the immersion and I love the elements they've put into it to immerse you even further into the game and on top of that you could play this in freaking VR that would be so intense if I had a VR system I would probably I would totally jump on that especially for the price yeah I mean the creatures too it's like they looked so foreign but they were based they're based off real creatures in the world um, you know once you get into the very depths of the ocean those are some of the creatures you come across there we go and the link is in chat there you can check it out for PC um, otherwise it is launching in a week on PS4 and it's really come across some really positive reviews and it's $19.99 right now on Steam so if you want to play this with PC definitely get it I, I honestly um, honestly honestly could give you that um, that recommendation seriously like if you like what you saw and you like this kind of thriller sort of suspense in, in horror aspect in a way uh, definitely get it it is just so much fun the you know it, it's there's not like a ton of interaction with the world but you don't need a ton of interaction because it's as much film and story as it is game uh, and I think it did. They did a really great job of balancing the two. Yeah, the game does a really good job of grabbing you in and making you forget about the real life. Oh yeah, about the real world. Absolutely. I. I mean, I I got sucked into it. I completely forgot what time it was, how long we've been streaming for. Like, all of that just went out the window. And the thing was, I still didn't find everything. I didn't find all the bodies. I didn't find all the trinkets. Uh, there was still much more to explore, but I was so worried at first about like running out of oxygen. But again, if you could find tanks, it gives you a little bit more time to explore. Um, I have to say that the most, probably the most terrifying aspects of it aren't even on the ship. It's actually uh, on the, the ocean floor because you're dealing with those spider crabs. You're dealing with uh, the corpses, the hallucinations, the methane gas, like all these different aspects. Um, and, and it's so dark and cramped and anything can come out at you. Anything can happen. And so I think that was probably one of the most terrifying. But there were really beautiful and great suspenseful moments in the different parts of Compass 1 and Compass 2. Especially with the hallucinations. All the bodies along the sides of the wall. The, um, the plant life coming from the ceiling. Uh, just all these different moments. And that really did a great job of, of telling an awesome story. Uh, yeah, this was super enjoyable. Uh, honestly, I think, I mean, for me, and I think this is with any first player, or, or excuse me, first player, first person point of view type of game, this sort of like FPS in a way style, um, you know, it, it, it's hard to like look around. And so it's really easy to get caught on stuff like in the environment and hard to move, especially when you're supposed to be in this big clunky suit. But I think in the sense of this game, though, it actually works. Other times it annoys the hell out of me. And it kind of annoyed me in this, too, with some of the puzzles. But that's okay, though. Because I think if I was stuck in the situation where I'm stuck in this big-ass suit and I can't really move and I can't really see around me, that's going to happen anyway. So that actually helped with the immersion factor, I think, even more so. Uh... So yeah, it's like it, even though it had those kind of like little things that you that f can frustrate someone in an FPS type of style game, it worked though because of the elements you were put in with the resources you had as that character. Uh, so I think that was great. The voiceover was really rich, and it really helped. In a way, the voices were calming, but it still made you kind of uneasy based on what you were hearing. And it made you a question a lot of things, especially your reality. Um, and I loved, there were some jump scares in there, but I thought it worked. Like, I liked it. I, I liked the jump scares. Um, it, it didn't feel forced. They didn't feel like, um, you know, oh, we have to put something in here now. It was just right. It's like you're at ease, but don't get too comfortable. Poof, you're screwed. Like, <laughs> something's there. Um, the fights too, like you didn't need to like use the knife a lot except for to defend. I wouldn't have mind actually being able to use the knife for other purposes. 
uh, if we had the time and if it didn't take away from the story, I think that would have been cool. Uh, whether it was to like pop open something to, to grab an item, maybe you could, and I just missed it. Um, I wouldn't have minded that a little bit though. You know, it, really use the resources you have more so uh, in, in different ways than just, okay, here's a knife. I can stab a, a squid um, or I can stab a fish. Uh, so that was interesting, uh, but I, I did still like it. And, you know, I liked how you could see like the thing, the, the, like the, the creatures right on the mask uh, that you're actually stabbing it, trying to get it away. Um, it seemed though that everything was like a three hit kill. I wouldn't have mind having that vary a bit just to keep me guessing slightly, uh, or at least based on the, the thing I'm hitting, maybe it had, maybe something has a little bit more health than another. And so therefore it took four instead of three. Like it felt a little repetitive. Like I, I got a flow pretty quickly when it started coming at me, like, okay, and strike. Boom. And then it, I would hit it before it even suctioned on to me. So it, it would have been nice to kind of vary it up. I think maybe a little bit more with the enemies. But it was still enjoyable, though. Still absolutely enjoyable. But yeah, this is crazy. And the fact, the reason why they were down there to farm, if you will, methane. I love that. That is great. Not the fact that they were farming methane. Don't do that shit. Stop using it. But the fact that it gave them purpose for being down there. And it wasn't just like, oh, we are doing scientific experimentations or, you know. We're doing this weird, crazy shit that no one's ever heard. No, like they were trying to farm methane, which many companies, energy companies and whatnot are trying to do, right? So it's like everything had this sense of realism to it and, and wasn't too absurd. So I really liked that. And we were enough in the future because we saw a calendar for uh, January 2019, you know, but and then that interview was in what was it? It took place in like 2023 or something like that. So it, it gave them a, enough room to play and be like, well, this is the future. So that was really cool. I, I just, I can't believe it. Like, I, I'm really in like a kind of shock and awe at the game. <coughs> We're making super sharks. Was it 2022? That was March 26, 2022. Okay. So yeah, we were in the future. Yeah, totally guys, seriously. Uh, if you want to have some fun, again, it, you're, it's not like The Witcher 3, by the way. You know, it's not like you're going to run around, pick up quests, and, and do all these different things. And it's not survival in the sense of, let's say, like a Rust or, or like a Conan, um, where you have to build things and defend yourself to a point. Like, you're already, you, you have what you have. You have your flares. Just make sure that you refill. You have your knives. Or you have your knife. And you have your oxygen. So, but the story grasps you, the, the voiceover grasps you, the visuals grasp you and just pull you in. Um, so it's definitely just a fun ride. If you're looking for more of like film meets a game, check this out. Give it some time. You're going to appreciate it. After you've watched this, if you watched it from beginning to end, get it now. $19.99 on Steam. You can also, again, in a week, get it on PS4. Get it. Wait a little bit, you know, give yourself a little bit of a break, a little bit of a pull away and be like, oh yeah, that's right, I have this game. I need to check it out. But yeah, no, that that was awesome. That was just... Honga champ, holy shit, so many. Just so many. <coughs> we came back, we're able to hang out with all of you to enjoy this really cool freaking game. We had the devs here in the chat hanging out with us and they followed and, and were awesome and gave us such good hint, tips and tricks. We greatly appreciate that. There's not many game devs All right. that will do that, by the way. Um, and Clock Twerk Orange, thank you for that follow. You've made our Carlton dance, and therefore you must do the Carlton dance as well. And can we get some Carlton pleases in the chat? P -p -p Please. Um, but yeah, th there are so many game devs that will not come into your chat, by the way, and say hey, and hang out, and get excited about the game. And they did. So, even if this game, if this game isn't for you, maybe you're not into the kind of claustrophobic feeling or anything like that, check out the game company, follow them on Twitter, because that is awesome, that they actually came in here, took the time to hang out with all of us, and they sounded just as excited as I do now, from this game. So props to them. This is why I love doing this too.
is to connect with devs that actually give a shit about their stories. It, crazy, Doc. Crazy, Doc. Sending good vibes so that y'all aren't down with the sickness anymore. Five months from Crazy Doc. Thank you, sir. Welcome back to the brain stream. Appreciate you so very much. Thank you, man. Let's get some hype pools in chat for Stuart there. Thank you, man. So does it get any better than that? Doesn't get any better than that. We got follows, we got hosts, we got subs, we got an awesome game, some awesome devs. First world contagion problems, yeah. Down with the sickness. Da -da 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 -da. Man, I don't know what else to say. I mean, that's that's really about it. This was fun. This was definitely fun. Is it worth playing again? You know, I'm I'm intrigued. I I think in a way I actually would play it. I would give myself a little bit of time. Uh, just because again I just played it. Uh, but I I think I honestly I would play it again. Try to find all the bodies. Try to find all the different knickknacks. Um, try to see if the if I could do something maybe a little bit differently with how I handled certain situations. Uh, but I think I definitely would play it again. So in the end, if I could give this a scale of, you know, one to ten. Hmm. One to ten. What would I give this? Like. Oh, man. I want to say at, I would give it at least an eight, if not a nine. I really like the art style, especially for an indie developer game. The art style, just damn. Um, the movement and the feel of the of of the movement, with, with being in that suit, the environment, uh, the voiceover. And no, it's not a perfect game. No, but I think you could tell the amount of time and the amount of energy they put behind this, and they tried to put a lot into what they had. And to do the book, the ebook, and to do the recorded uh, PNR, public national radio interview like they did in the game, and get a better sense of the story, the characters, and everything going on. Like, holy shit. I mean, that's the kind of content we want to see in games. Those additional little perks and, and, and moments in there. Trying to mimic fresh air on NPR. Yep, exactly. It's open air on PNR. Yeah, it's exactly right. You know, I just, I think that's awesome. That's such, that's so, uh, uh, damn. You know, I mean, that's just, that takes us such a level of creativity. And I think that's so cool that they added that into it. You don't see games with that. Or if they add like little things like that, they're like, oh, well, go to our website, you know, and, you know, check the codex on the website. No, screw you. They put it in the game. And, you know, that is just so damn cool. It's just those little things that just really round out this game and make me really appreciate it overall. So check it out again, 1999 on Steam coming out uh, on PS4. Get hyped for that. It's going to be dope. Um, other than that, I got nothing else to say about the game. I think I've like word vomited everything in my brain. I'm still like wrapping my mind around everything. That's the thing. And I kid you not. Like it got into my like fight or flight moment, like in my like my, you know, like your fight or flight reactions that you get. Um, I got caught up in that and I was so like on edge and then I would try to describe something to you guys. And it was just so hard to like come up with words because <laughs> my brain is like, no, sucker, you're not working on that. <laughs> you're working on surviving. Uh, that was good.